Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at the upcoming changes to the AWS Solutions Architect Associate Exam. So it's the new exam is out March 23rd, 2020. And that means if you're sitting for this exam, you will be taking the new one beyond that date. So the way to know which exam you're taking is look for the uh, course code. SAACO1 is the old one. SSACO2 is the new one. I know uh, there's a lot of people that have questions about this and it's kind of stressing them out. So I'm going to hopefully answer that stuff so that you know what you need to do to prepare for the new exam. So the first thing that people are asking me is, if I have yet to start studying for the exam, should I wait a few months? And the logic behind this is that it allows content creators to catch up on, uh, catch up and produce new content. Practice exams uh, will be more up to date and we'll get more feedback from the community. And I would say for the changes that I see that are happening, I would say no, the changes aren't dramatic enough for you to delay your start. So do not delay uh, your journey into getting able to certified. Uh, you're gonna be okay with the content that's out there. There's gonna be a little bit of extra work for you um, to do. So the next thing is, what if you're already studying? So I'm already studying, uh, will I have to restudy? And the answer is for the study material itself, no. Uh, we may see some additions or uh, amendments for content creators. So even for myself, um, I'm going to probably add a few extra videos, but the, the whole of the content will remain the same. Uh, so you do not have to do anything in that regards. For practice exams, this is a little bit different. Uh, we are going to have to wait a little bit, maybe a week or two to see uh, what people are saying about uh, the actual questions. So you just have to be watching out for what people are reporting and see if they mention any additional services uh, that haven't been mentioned before. But I would say on the whole, the practice exams that are out there, you're gonna do totally fine um, because m the majority of this exam is the same. When we saw a change from the last Solution Architect Associate, there was a dramatic shift on how the questions were written. Um, but I don't think we're going to see that here. We're just seeing a refinement of this uh, certification. So it's not as dramatic. So you're totally fine with the, the content that's out there. Uh, another thing people always ask me is, can I still use the free CoCamp Exam Pro Solution Architect free course to study? If you aren't aware, I have a free course on YouTube uh, and it's 10 hours long. Um, and this is to help you uh, pass. I made this at, at the end of uh, 2019, so it's extremely up to date than almost every other provider out there, and you could absolutely use this still. Um, I will probably end up reshooting it beyond March just because I want to improve the quality, but the content's gonna be mostly the same with some uh, additions, so you absolutely 100% can keep on using that and it's not gonna be an issue. And the last thing is what is exactly changing, and so that's what we're gonna take a look at. So here, I have the old exam guide uh, on the left and we have the new one on the right. And we're just gonna look at the changes. I'm gonna show you that it's not that dramatic. So on the left, you can see we have the five domains. And if it isn't obvious, they actually match exactly to the well architected framework, resilient, performant, secure, cost optimization, operational excellent architectures. So what has changed is they've removed domain five, which only ever had uh, like it was 6%, it was just kind of this like weird uh, a section on the end and they've removed it. So they've just taken that off there. So that was only like a few questions on the exam. Uh, so that isn't a dramatic change. There is an adjustment to the overall percentages. It's more balanced. Before you can see like, if you look at cost optimization, it's 10%, which in my opinion was way, way too low. It's such an important component to uh, becoming a solution architect. So they've taken that percentage and moved that up there and they've uh, reduced uh, resilient. Okay, so it's just one domain gone and uh, just an adjustment to those percentages. And then you'll notice that uh, from the domains, we have uh, defined performing architectures has been ch changed to design high performing architectures. And to me, that is just uh, a, a bit of a word change. I don't see much difference in terms of content there. Sure, they have more subdomains, but that's not gonna change the questions that much. So I'm telling you that this isn't a major, major change. I do predict that we're gonna see a lot of serverless technology because that is something that has been woefully lacking in these exams. So, um, you know, I think that will be the, the major addition that we see here, but generally it's business as usual. Uh, just be aware that if you wanna still take the old exam, which ends on, it ends on March 22, 2020, that's your last chance to take it. So if you really aren't comfortable taking the new one, try to get your exam before that date. Uh, and then, uh, you know, March 23rd, 2020, that is the time for the new one. So, you know, good luck. And I hope uh, you're feeling a little bit less stressed and you're still on your journey to get AWS certified.